I'm Dr. Michael Scrani, and this is Sandy, and welcome to the DCU School of Computing PhD Research Series, where each week we take one PhD student and ask them three simple questions. Who they are, what's the research about, and why is the research important? And this week we have Suzanne McCarthy to talk to us about ETL for agri-data sets. Hi, my name is Suzanne McCarthy, and I'm a final year PhD student in DCU. Uh, my background is actually in psychology and cyber psychology. Uh, I have a master's in cyber psychology, but I moved into data analytics because I see an opportunity both to bring the human experience into the area of data analytics and to upgrade the level of data analytics used in the psychology research. So uh, first I did the graduate diploma in IT in DCU. That led to employment in a startup in the area of agri-analytics, so data analytics for the agricultural sector. I worked with a small team uh, setting up a regularly updating data warehouse of international agricultural trade, price and production data. While I was working on that, I noticed I was having a lot of difficulties adapting the conventional warehousing techniques that I was using at the time to a set of data sets that kept changing which became a problem that I wanted to solve when I was offered the PhD position. To prepare business intelligence reports, it's often necessary to combine your in-house data warehouse with external data sources. This is done using a process, or rather a set of processes called ETL, Extract, Transform, Load, where the data is imported from its various sources, transformed and changed so that the data from all these different sources can be viewed together so that they make sense and then load it to a data warehouse. A type of ETL called on-demand ETL, or sometimes called lazy ETL, delays this set of processes until the data is needed to fulfill a query, and then only performs them on the data that's actually needed to fulfill that query. In a data environment where my data sources are dynamic, I'm creating an ETL architecture where for each newly imported data source, I create a number of metadata constructs, templates or blueprints for how to import and transform the data without actually performing those actions on the data, then waiting until those little bits of data are needed to fulfill a query, and then transforming and loading only those bits of data to a dynamic data mart. This, the data that's most frequently needed to fulfill queries is readily available as a data queue, and can be reused to fulfill a new query as and when it's needed. And data that's not so frequently used can stay in its native format, still available when it's needed, but saving me the trouble of having to process it before it's needed. This work is important because the strength of your reports and the accuracy of your analytics really depends on the quality of the data that you're using as your inputs. As we say, garbage in, garbage out. That's why about 80% of our time in a data analytics project is spent on just getting the data ready for processing. The problem is traditional ETL process is usually performed upfront on all available data which is time consuming and it's expensive and it leads to this bulky resource heavy data warehouse. And sometimes all you need is just a small amount of data to answer your query or just a quick look at the data to see if it's interesting. And even then it's not a once off expense because data sources don't remain static. Publishers change the way they make their data available. They change the semantics and contents of the data leading to that ETL process and set of processes having to be rewritten. My research has involved first creating an underlying ETL architecture that can cope with these constant small changes without having to be rewritten. Then looking at the way the queries are processed so that the results of previous queries can be used to address new queries. And finally, what happens when a query requires the data from a previous query to be combined with new data? 